Bell's palsy is also known as idiopathic facial paralysis. Um, it causes an acute onset facial weakness on one side. Uh, it is thought to be due to a virus. The key in the clinical history is the uh, rapid onset of the one-sided facial weakness. The facial nerve, which is cranial nerve 7, uh, enters the inside of the temporal bone, runs through the middle ear space, exits through an opening right below the earlobe, and enters the substance of the parotid gland where it divides into five peripheral branches that innervate all of the muscles of facial expression on one side. So closing your eye, blinking, smiling, uh, the 22 different muscles that move the face are all innervated by that one nerve. The facial weakness is caused by swelling of the nerve uh, within its own bony canal. And as the nerve swells, it actually paralyzes itself. After three to four weeks, usually with the treatment of steroids, which are anti-inflammatory to reduce the swelling, 85% or so of patients with Bell's palsy will have a normal facial function or close to a normal facial function. If we see patients whose facial nerve has been paralyzed for greater than a month, the first thing we'll do is order radiographic studies, usually an MRI, to make sure it's not due to a tumor. So if the MRI is normal and the facial function is zero after a month, one of the surgical options traditionally has been to decompress the nerve, meaning remove the bony sleeve from the nerve to give it room. We have taken it a step further by using electrical stimulation of the facial nerve after removing the bony covering. We use intraoperative monitoring of the nerve. So after the patients are asleep, uh, needle electrodes are inserted into the various muscle groups that are innervated by the nerve. And while we're working, if we touch the nerve, it sends a signal through the nerve, through the face of musculature, through the monitoring unit, and there's an audio feedback where we hear a popping sound to tell us that the nerve is intact and it's safe. So after the bone is removed, and after the sheath is opened that covers the nerve, we'll put the stimulator on the facial nerve proximal to the narrowest point of the facial nerve and literally try to run an electrical current through that damaged swollen facial nerve. And by increasing the amount of voltage through the nerve, we can almost the equivalent of jumpstart the nerve. And what we've seen is that these patients have earlier return of facial function. Rarely would we see any movement of the face one month after just bony decompression. But with the bony decompression and the electrical stimulation, a lot of these patients do have very slight mid-face movement as early as one month. And as soon as we see that movement of any sort, even the slightest movement, then they'll be referred for facial retraining physical therapy. We have a facial nerve disorders center. Having a center dedicated to facial paralysis, no matter what the cause, has been a big part and a big subset of our Loyola Center for Cranial-Based Tumors, which is now over 25 years in existence.